Hello everybody, my name is Matthias and I want to talk to you today about carbon capture systems. Researchers and scientists today are in no doubt about the fact that the climate that we live in is changing and that this change is in fact man-made. The increase in the need for energy and transportation has led to an increase in the emission of so-called greenhouse gases, short GHG. One of those GHG gases is CO2. It is a byproduct of the combustion of fossil fuels like coal and oil for energy production. Next to the solution close at hand to be more responsible with the energy that we use and the sources from which we take this energy from, there have been many different ideas to counter the increasing emissions. One way that has gotten quite a big attention over recent years is the implementation of so-called carbon capture systems. The idea is to capture the airborne CO2, separate it from the air and store it in any shape or form. This sounds simple, but the application in praxis brings some challenges. For example, the energy that has to be used to run the separation and storing has to be produced and is bound to produce emission itself. This is the reason why the efficiency of many carbon capture systems is very low. Biomass-based industries, which are rich in self-generated biomass residues, are in a uniquely position here. They are equipped to implement low carbon production. An example would be the craft pulp industry, which accounts for 70% of the pulp production worldwide. The craft process uses a chemical mixture to dissolve the so-called lignin, which holds the wood fibers together. After separating the product, the fibers, the so-called black liquor is left. Roughly 50% of the biomass of the wood that enters the craft process is left in this black liquor. To recover and reuse the chemicals used in the craft process, this black liquor is burned in recovery boilers. This produces steam and energy, which in combination with the energy production from burning bark in modern craft mills, covers the energy demand of the whole mill. Combined pulp and paper mills have to buy additional energy to run their low and high steam operations. To achieve so-called carbon negative production from this starting point, a technology based on renewable biomass based energy conversion with CO2 capture and permanent storage has to be implemented. In existing craft pulp mills with modern combined heating and power systems based on recovery boilers and biomass boilers, electrical efficiencies are low. Improved overall efficiency, increased electrical efficiency and reduced CO2 emissions could be accomplished by the introduction of black liquor integrated gasification combined cycle with an electrical efficiency of 28 to 29 percent. The most efficient point to capture CO2 in pulp mills would happen from the flue gases of the recovery boilers. This is so-called post-combustion capture. Although post-combustion capture can yield a 10 to 40 percent higher capture rate, it also brings an up to 25% higher cost than pre-combustion capture systems. In conclusion, it can be said that the biomass gasification in combination with permanent CO2 storage would make it possible for pulp and paper mills to manufacture pulp or paper while being a net exporter of biomass-based electricity and at the same time remove substantial amounts of CO2 from the atmosphere for each ton of pulp and paper produced. The problem is that carbon negative production is only then really economically feasible if sufficient incentives are in place to generate negative CO2 emissions. For example, through a negative CO2 tax or emission trading permits paid to owners of plants that remove CO2 from the atmosphere. This was my final project for MEC 542. Thank you for watching and until next time.